All right, guys, as you can see, it is a wet and rainy day here in Kuala Lumpur, and I'm completely soaked. And I can think of nothing better on a wet and rainy day than to come and eat some great food. And I think I've chosen a special little restaurant for you called Al Khufra, which serves Arabic food. Let's go in and check it out. Okay, welcome to the restaurant Al Khufra. As I say, Arabic food, Egyptian actually, the family is from Egypt, and I quite like the decoration. Say hello. <laughs> I quite like the decoration with the, uh, with the style of chairs and the table. But as you know, guys, it is all about the food. And if you're wondering why it's so quiet in here, I've come in the lull period between lunch and dinner. This place actually opens between 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. Okay, I've had a look at the menu and already I cannot wait. We have soups and side dishes. So chicken soup, lentil soup, mushroom soup. Have the appetizers, which are, I'm more familiar with in terms of Arabic foods like hummus, Arabic salad, baba ganoush, which is eggplant or aubergine dip, fatouche. And you have your main dishes. And this is what really gets my mouth watering. Mandi lamb. I have not had lamb in so long. So we might try that. You have some Egyptian dishes, which to be honest, guys, I've never heard of, but they look super tasty. And then if you are coming as a group, you have these really good options actually, where you can order sets or let's call it feasts. And it's essentially combo meals. And again, they also look great. And to top it all off, you have all of your fruit juices. And I've ordered one here, which is apparently the special of the house, which is a mint and lime drink. Just gonna go into the kitchen and order and have a look around the kitchen. He's letting me go in there. I love going into kitchens of restaurants. I would like hummus baruti, yeah. Arabic salad, yep. lamb mandi, yep. and then a chicken dish. I was thinking shish tawuk. Shish tawuk. Yep. All good? Yeah, come and, with bread. And come with bread. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so this guy's is called the Al Khufra yeah. or Taboon, as I think I knew it. Yeah. Arabic word for clay pit, essentially, yeah. or, or brick pit. Where, they, where you cook underground. Yes. And this restaurant actually has its own, which, how cool is that? And every day you cook with it or? Yeah. And this is, so the lamb is cooked in here. So the, the thing is. Ah, you put this inside. The, the rice we put down. Okay. On the top we put the lamb. Yeah. Or, or chicken. Okay, and then it drips. Yeah, yeah. We, after the uh, charcoal already fully uh, burned. Yeah. Uh, we just put it uh, inside. Okay. Now we have uh, ah. the Yeah, just bring it down and we close it tightly. It's very heavy. So yeah, sure. Yeah, we close for two hours. Two hours? Yeah, minimum okay. close. And then the, the juices from the meat will drip yeah, down yeah. onto the rice. the rice. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to trying that lamb because just imagine the flavor that comes from that charcoal and in that pit. So these are the spices that goes into the rice. I'll give you a very quick guided tour, but actually, before I do, you tell me if you can recognize any of them. Ready? Okay, see so if I can recognize them. Coriander seed, coriander powder, cumin seed whole and cumin powder. He says it's very important to have both the whole and the powder. Cinnamon, green cardamom, cloves, little bit of chicken stock for the flavor and then black, pepper whole and then white pepper ground and actually this is going to give obviously a peppery flavor but the white pepper is going to give a little bit of heat as well and that's where you get your spice from so this is the secret powder for the meat but it's already ground so i have no idea what yeah, is in it already mixed seven seven we call it hawaii so mix yeah seven. sure I won't push him too hard. Every restaurant needs its <laughs> secrets right whilst we are waiting for the food let me just try this drink Mmm, real mint, fresh mint. Straight away you get the mint hit, and then the sourness from the lime comes through. I'm used to these drinks being very, very sweet. When you order a coconut shake or a fruit shake, they pour a load of sugar syrup in. Not in this one, it's really, really good. And I think that might be the perfect match for the spices and the lamb that's going to come. All right, guys, the feast has arrived on the table and let me show you around. I've already destroyed some of it because I've taken the B-roll shot, so apologies for that. But let's start with the shish tawuk, and it is chicken, which has been grilled, and it's got the spices on the outside, as you can see, but it's, it's been charred from being cooked over the grill, and it comes with 
some long charred peppers, a charred tomato or grilled tomato, some red onion, and a few fries that he's put on the side too, and then garnished with what looks like coriander and raw red onion. It also comes with some bread, now it's for extra bread anyway. <laughs> Not that I need it, but uh, for the hummus and the salad, I thought bread would be good. The hummus is one I have destroyed. It is the Beruti hummus, which just means, I think, that it's made with extra, extra garlic. And you can see it is nice and smooth, and on top he has drizzled a nice light olive oil. But I have not had hummus in a while, so I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, that one is destroyed. Sorry, guys. Next up is the Arabic salad, and it's been chopped finely. I really like that. It has red chili, lettuce, cucumber, green chili, tomato, a lot of coriander, red onion, and I presume there'll be lemon juice and olive oil through there as well. Before we get on to the style of the show, which is the lamb, I'll just show you the flatbread. Nice, flat, homemade flatbread, which has been baked, I presume, on the hot griddle, and then star of the show, and the thing I'm looking forward to most, because I have not had lamb in a long, long time, is this lamb mandi. And actually, originally the dish is from Yemen, but it's also found all over the Arabic world, Turkey, Egypt, which is where these guys are from, Lebanon and places such as that. And you can just see how soft and juicy this lamb is from being cooked. First boiled, as he said, cooked halfway and then finished in that taboon or al hufra and beneath is that light fluffy rice with all of those spices that we saw in the kitchen finally before we get stuck in the lamb comes with a little bit of that lamb stock which has the globules of fat on top you just know that's going to have so much flavor then it comes with this dip which looks like chili and fresh tomato so that goes all over the rice which we will do there we go dawn that rice with that sauce. Finally, let's get stuck in, and I don't really know where to start, but I think we'll start with the hummus, as that's the one that's kind of like the appetizer here. And if we're gonna have the hummus, we need to grab some of the flatbread. And I tell you, that is one thing I have really missed in Asia. I know this is not, <laughs> I know this is not bread as I kind of know it in Europe, but I have really missed good bread, and flatbread may just sort that out. You can see, I mean, look at that. Perfect, nice and soft, nice and fluffy. Wrap a little bit of that up and dip it, dip it into that hummus. Mm. Mm. Straight away you get the citrus, the sharpness from the lemon in the hummus. It's been, it's smooth, it's not too grainy. Sometimes hummus can be quite grainy, but it's not at all, but that nice rich, chickpea flavor, soft, smooth, lemony, just how I like it actually. I love lemony hummus. But this one, there were two types of hummus on the menu, just the normal hummus and the hummus beruti. And the beruti is one which is amped up with garlic. This one is the beruti, which has a ton more garlic in. So again, running through the whole of that hummus is the garlic flavor and I love it. The bread is light and fluffy, nice flavor. It's it's probably just made with flour, water, and salt, to be honest. No yeast, you can see, it's not leavened at all, and it will just be cooked on top of that hot plate. But, I don't know. It's, hummus is one of those things, because it's so rich, so savory, you just want to eat more and more and more. But I know there is a lot of food here, so I can't just munch through the whole hummus and the flatbreads, but one more bite. Okay, next up, I think we'll try the chicken shish. Let me just grab a fork. I know actually really should eat with the hands, but just look at the char. I've left it a little bit, and uh, that's kind of the problem with YouTube. You can't eat things at their ultimate best, and when certain food hits the table, it carries on cooking. So it's probably cooled down a bit, and maybe slightly carried on cooking too. But you can just see the char on the outside of that chicken where it's been cooked over the charcoal. It would have been cooked on a skewer, I imagine, but they've taken it off the skewer for presentation. But it looks good, and I just love the color of the dish, bright green with all of that coriander, then the red pop of the red onion as well. But yeah, let's try it. Mm. Oh yeah, 
you can taste the char, the smokiness on the outside of it. I said it looks like it's been charred on the grill, but you, that flavor is just put into that meat. And you might be saying, what is the difference between shawarma or kebab and tawuk? I was also thinking the same, so I asked him, and the difference is shawarma doesn't have yogurt and lemon juice in the marinade on the outside. What that does is it actually keeps it, it tenderizes it for a start, but then keeps it moist and adds that layer of, let's say flavor, because I think it's one of those things that you wouldn't know if it wasn't there, but it adds something to it being there, let's say. The chicken, it's breast, but it is moist, it is tender. It is flavorful and the spices on the outside, the warming spices, flavors that are so comforting, like the cinnamon, I can definitely taste cinnamon, the cumin, yeah, really, really good. You know what I think will make it even better? Watch this. I'm British, right? So I have to make a sandwich or we're gonna make a wrap. So we've got our flatbread. I'm gonna add a little bit of the hummus on the bottom. A little bit of that chicken, grilled delicious chicken. Just a touch, a few pieces. Okay, and you add a little bit of that red pepper, a little piece of that green pepper, and I think, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm gonna add some of the salad into there as well. How good does that look? Okay, our little wrap. Actually, I've, I'm, I've chosen a terrible piece of flatbread because I can't actually wrap it up without it all falling out, so. You can see I haven't done it in a while, but wrap it up. Look at that. Ha ha ha. How good does that look? Let's try it. I'll bring the plate over just in case it all falls out. Oh, they are good individually, but that, that is the way to eat it. And actually, those peppers or those chilies, they have a bit of a kick. Oh yeah. Last mouthful, let's just dip it and scoop up some of that coriander for the freshness. Mm. Your, your best flavors. Okay, I'm going to be taught a way to eat this grilled tomato, which actually, if you're British, grilled tomato normally goes on a fry up in the morning, the, the British breakfast, but this is the way you do it in Egypt. So a little bit of salt, just a little bit, little pinch. Yeah, yeah on top yeah. enough yeah. okay yeah. And two drop of, uh, lime. just a little bit of lime okay, okay enough this is going to be the best tomato i've ever had right you will enjoy. <laughs> thank you let's try it all right you know i normally wouldn't gravitate towards the grilled tomato if i was eating a breakfast because i just don't think it really has that much flavor and it's not the best form of tomato but he promises me this is going to change my life so Let's see. Tomato bursts in your mouth. Of course, watery and juicy, but with that lemon juice and the salt, it's definitely elevated it to the next level. Next time I have an English full breakfast, I'm going to pull the lime out. Quick sip of this lime and mint drink. Oh, so good. And then, since we tried it in the wrap, let's quickly just try this Arabic salad. I've already told you what's in it. I'll just give it a taste, try it on its own. The one thing actually in Asia, I know you can get a lot of vegetables, but actually a lot of dishes, a lot of my favorite dishes don't come with veg or salads on the side. So ordering something like this, I thought it'd be quite good for me. Freshen it up a little. Mm. Very nice, very fresh. Mm. Maybe it's the green chilies in the salad, which has a spicy kick. Not the, not the big ones themselves. But yeah, the freshness of the salad, the lemon juice, and then that little bit of a kick. And actually I think the red chilies in here are actually more pepper-like. Nice pepper flavor coming through. Mm. When you have something, <clears throat> there you go, the spice is back to the throat. When you have something as rich, big, and bold as this, actually, it's nice to break it up with a light, fresh salad. 
the main event, the thing I have been looking forward to most, the lamb, which as you saw is cooked in the taboon, as I've already referenced again. We've already put on that chili tomato sauce on top. I don't know if it's spicy actually. Let's, let's try it before I add more. Okay, it's got a little bit of a kick, but it's more fresh than anything else, to be honest. It's actually, it's really good. So let's chuck more of that on and get it mixed up. Oh yeah, there is a nice freshness. Again, just these flavors, which, although you can find them, obviously we're in Asia now, you can find these flavors, but they're not super common. And personally, I love Middle Eastern food. I love Arabic food. So if I do see it and I do find it, I will actually come in every now and then and treat myself. And I say treat myself because of course, it's not local food. So it does cost a little bit more, but when you have flavors as big as bold as this, I'd say it's worth it. I didn't say before, but it goes without saying, the lamb is cooked on the bone. And let me tell you, that adds to the flavor massively. When I see meat cooked on the bone, you just know the chances of it being tasty are that much higher. And the cat with that rich lamb fat on top, almost like a little lamb lollipop. I think maybe we're just gonna try this piece like this. Let's go for it. Actually, let's dip it in the sauce first. Why not? There you go, scoop up some of that sauce. Mm. <laughs> I didn't do it very gracefully because I thought I was taking a bit of bone into my mouth, but it just slid off those bones cleanly. It's so soft, it's so tender, and the flavor, the lamb flavor, the richness that you get from lamb, and it is lamb. Sometimes you see mutton on the menu and it's actually goat, but this is lamb, and yeah, it is super, super delicious. You can taste all of the spices, of course. Not spicy, but the spices, the cumin, the coriander, the cardamom, that's definitely spiced onto the lamb. I'm not gonna try and guess all of them because it is his secret recipe. I think it's fair to keep it that way. But the thing that is like an explosion of flavor in your mouth is that lamb fat. It's been cooked down, it's rendered. It's not this horrible texture in your mouth. It's not chewy or flabby. It just melts as it hits the warmth of your tongue. Oh man, and it unleashes that incredible lamb flavor. I'm as excited for the rice as I am the lamb after seeing all of those spices. And I said before, just look how light and fluffy that is. Let's try it. Oh yeah soft and fragrant, and you get the warming spices coming through. What's important with these spices is to get the balance right, because if you have too much cumin or too much coriander or too much cardamom or especially that clove, something which is very strong and powerful, if you get that wrong, it can really, well, it can ruin a dish because it ruins the balance. We should try it with a bit of that lamb. So let's get some of the rice and some of that tomato dressing and try that. Value for money is definitely worth it. 29 ringgit for the lamb. And you have to expect to pay more for lamb than you do for chicken. I just like to call that one out. Lamb is expensive, but the portion size is also huge. I mean, two people could eat this. Let's again dip into this bread. And actually on this one, you can really see where it has been cooked. Let's get a little bit of that bread. Take up a little bit of that tomato sauce and then some of that fatty lamb. I want the moisture in this bread and actually we'll add a little bit more of that tomato sauce onto it. And our next <laughs> little wrap. I like the rice. I mean, it is just packed with flavor, but let's face it, I've been in Asia a little while now. I have eaten a lot of rice. There's just something about some good bread which, well, for me, is just making this dish so much better. Absolutely love it. And the chicken is good, the lamb is fantastic, but what I keep going back to, oddly, is the hummus. I said I wasn't gonna eat it all, but look at it. It's pretty much, well, it is now, gone. So, so Moorish. So if that wasn't enough, you cannot come to a Middle Eastern or Arabic restaurant without having a dessert. And the dessert of choice, always, 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 Bonafa. And that is a traditional Middle Eastern dessert made with spun pastry called Katafi. Katafi? <laughs> made with spun, made, look, I can't pronounce it, 
So I'm checking. <laughs> I'm checking with a nine-year-old kid on my pronunciation. What has it come to? Anyway, it's made with the spun pastry called kataifi. It's cooked, soaked in sugar syrup and then sprinkled with pistachios on top. Inside, you can either have cheese. When I was in Istanbul, I had it with cheese. And let me tell you, I absolutely love this dessert. Just look at this toasty, warm, sweet goodness. And it is sweet, but let me tell you, it is full of deliciousness. And you can just see the little spindles of pastry. Looks like a spider's web or a bird's nest better. It looks like a bird's nest. Let's taste. Oh yeah, it's sweet, it's sticky, slightly crunchy where it's been toasted. It's very, very good. Not too sweet. Sometimes they can be really sweet, but this one is not too sweet at all. And then you get the crunch and the taste of that pistachio on top. Yeah, great dessert. It's homemade. You made it. He made it, he's the chef. He wishes. It was his daddy, but it's very good. Homemade kunefa. Okay, guys, I, I am absolutely stuffed. I nearly finished all of it. There's a little bit that I'm going to take away for my dinner later. But yeah, what a meal. Pretty good value, I would say. Very, very tasty. It's nice to mix things up. And yeah, I love Asian food, of course. But every now and then, I just like to change the cuisine a little bit. And if you want to try very good Arabic food in Kuala Lumpur, get to this place. Order the lamb mandi, order the hummus, and definitely order that lime and mint drink. And what I like even more than the food is when I meet people who are passionate about what they do. And this family is definitely one of those. It makes the experience so much better. He really does love what he does and tries to deliver the food from his heart. And you can taste that, you can taste that in the dishes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.